everyone. Uh, thank you for coming. I mean, you had to. <laughs> it's school. So, uh, here's my project. This is a plane, but don't think of it as a plane. Think of it as a superpower. Because in 1920, if you were brave enough to fly one of these things, to even go up in one, you were kind of a superhero. That's true for pretty much all new technology. It was the same with cars. Oh, no talking. Thank you, Wayne. <sighs> okay, now you've thrown the timing off. Resetting. Tina, Jean. Whoops, dropped the cloud. <laughs> um, how was everyone's Mother's Day? Did you all spend it working on your presentations like I did? Get your moms to help? Some present, right? The only present they got was a presentation. <laughs> Thanks, Rudy. You're welcome. Oh, sorry, you said no talking. So, the subject of my report gets to go on her first flight as a passenger when she's 23 years old, and she decides right then and there she wants to be a pilot. Amelia Earhart gets her pilot's license in 1923. In 1932, already famous but determined to prove herself as a pioneer, she flies solo across the Atlantic. The first woman and only the second person ever to do this. Her most ambitious goal, however, to be the first woman to fly around the world, this goal she would never achieve. Her voice on the radio during the final part of that journey would be the last anyone heard from her ever. Yeah, I know. Imagine my surprise when I found that out. It was so badly planned. They didn't bring the right kind of radio. And nothing. No ship. No Howland Island. No land of any kind. They were exactly where they weren't supposed to be. Over the open ocean with nothing but fumes left in the gas tanks. When they realized just how bad things were, Milia and her navigator must have talked. But what is there to say? Oops. I imagine that she made a graceful landing on the water. I imagine that they climbed out up onto the nose of the plane. I imagine the plane was sinking, but not quickly. The body of it would fill with water and slowly become too heavy for the empty gas tanks and the wings to hold up on the surface. And I picture Amelia really facing her fate. No planes in the sky, no ships on the horizon, and she would have known soon she'd be treading water. The Great Flyer is now a floater. Fish food. <laughs> Wayne, dip it. Amelia Earhart didn't fly around the world. And some people may think that makes her a failure. And those people might say that loudly while standing next to you with hot breath. And sometimes, yeah, people with louder, deeper voices get heard more, and that's really annoying. But that doesn't make me want to make my voice lower and deeper. That just makes me mad. I mean, I can do it. Hey, I'm Louise. See? Pretty good. But that's not the point. Look what Earhart did. She saved her money and she bought her bright red Lockheed Vega. That was her saying, hello, this is what my voice sounds like. That thing had a 450 horsepower engine. That basically means an engine as strong and as loud as 450 horses mushed together. And it could fly. If you wrote a book and you invented this character, this dashing lady pilot, you might become a famous author. Well, she was that character. She wrote herself. Okay, so we know what probably happened. But who knows, right? When you're that far out in the world, there's more magic. That's true. It's like that in the North Pole and in the jungles. Maybe after she made her peace, just before she got too tired to keep afloat, maybe some of that magic lifted that plane right back up underneath her. And maybe she got to fly it back up into the air and maybe she never had to land again. Maybe she dropped Fred Noonan off in Navigator Heaven and then kept going. I like to think of her flying around up there right now. She makes me want to write a story for myself that's as big and as freaking cool as hers. So that's why Amelia Earhart is my hero. Wow. Yay. That's good. And it's not a contest, but I think that's better than a male astronaut. Okay, who's up next? Is it Wayne? Yeah, it's Wayne. Uh... 